Appreciate it. Well, um, I know with it, it's opening day for the kids' uh, baseball season. There's some of the uh, kids who are opening day. and want to keep that in mind for you. And I'd like to pray for, for the boys and girls who are playing baseball. Why don't just recognize Faith Williams? You want to stand up just for us? Turn around so everybody can see you. Um, she played the lead role in a drama this past week, Cinderella. And um, I hear you got a great voice. So I just want to congratulate you. And um, I'm going to ask you to turn to Acts chapter 1. And... Uh, going to pray here. Well, Lord God in heaven, I, I ask you, Father, that your word will ring forth, Father, into our hearts. I know that what I have to say today is nothing new, but I pray, God in heaven, that, Father, it will be fresh today for where each one of us are at in our spiritual journey. And so, Father, I ask that you would be with us, go before us. I pray for all the, the kids who, uh, and young men who are doing baseball and the gals who are doing so, uh, uh, softball. And pray for our own softball team as well. Uh, Father, I pray that uh, they honor you in the field. Uh, yet, Lord, uh, help them win. We want them to win. And uh, Lord, we pray that, Father, no one would get hurt. And so we uh, give you the honor and glory for it all. In Christ's name, amen. Well, how many of you like nice sunny days? Yeah. Can I hear a yeah again? Yeah, everybody likes a nice sunny day. I mean, isn't it just so nice to be able to kind of walk outside and have a t-shirt on? Yes? Yes, amen. You got it, man. And isn't it so nice to be able to take a cup of coffee and just walk outside and just relax and not feel like you're freezing cold? <clears throat> but how do you feel when those uh, cloudy days come? And sometimes even those cloudy days venture on to, you know, a week maybe even two weeks at a time, when it just tends to be cloudy and misty and chilly, and are you getting excited? No. So what keeps you going in the middle of those clouds, in the middle of that drizzly, rainy day, even sometimes when it stretches on to weeks? You know something, don't you? What, what keeps you going? You, you know, right? Come on, come on, you know. What, what's coming? What's coming, brothers and sisters? The sun is coming, that's right. Everybody say the sun. The sun, the, the sun is coming. You know it's coming, don't you? You know it's coming. And how do you know it's coming? Well, just think about this. You, you, you know that um, the earth is experiencing... Um, various kinds of effects because of the presence of the sun. So that keeps going on, you know what I mean? Radiation and everything else like that. You, you also know that there is light, right? You woke up in the morning and although it's cloudy and it's misty, there's still light, otherwise it would be completely, completely pitch black. Am I, am I right in that? Okay, thank you very much. I'm not a scientist, so I'm really getting concerned here. Okay, so you know that it's not pitch black. Guess what? You also know that, um, that it's warm. And because there is, you know, let's, let's look at it like this. If there was no sun, you would freeze to death, right? You would completely freeze to death. So even though it might be 65 degrees and cloudy, and yucky and chilly with a cold rain, there is still warmth in the air to sustain your body. 
and it's because of the Son. But you also know that the Son is coming because you've seen it, haven't you? You have seen the Son. I mean, now you cannot gaze directly at it. You wish you could. You can't. But you know it's there. Just like today, if you walk out, bam, man, you're going to feel the rays of that sun. And it's going to be so nice. I can't wait to get out of here. It'll be so nice. <laughs> right? But what do you go through when you experience those spiritual cloudy days when it just seems like there's a storm and it just seems like those spiritual cloudy days are dark and cold and damp and it just seems like your prayers are just just going up to heaven and coming back you feel like you're knocking on the door to heaven in your prayers, and there just seems to be no answers. Or those days when you, you want to believe in God, but you struggle to believe in him. And, and when you, you kind of scratch your head, and when other people say, the Lord said to me, and you step back and say, Lord said nothing to me. Or... I really sensed the Lord's presence today. I didn't feel the Lord's presence. I don't even know what you're talking about. So, how do you know? How do you know there is the Lord? It seems to me, Luke wrote something that he wanted. And actually, the Lord wanted the disciples to know. Beyond a shadow of doubt. You might have a lot of other theological questions. You might have a, a ton of questions about God that you don't understand. But there's one thing that he wanted you, know, wanted you to know and he wanted the disciples to know that would be absolutely clear. I mean, no questions. And we see this in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And it says this, He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. You see, when we go through those stormy spiritual days, the Lord wants us to know that he is alive, no matter what. He is alive in the good times, and he is alive in the bad times. He is alive in poverty, and he is alive in wealth. He is alive when you're single, and he is alive when you are married. He is alive when you're childless, and he is alive when you have children. He is alive when the kids are calm and quiet, and he is alive when the kids are screaming, and you can't please any of them. He is alive. He is alive when you are rich, and he is alive when you are broke. He is alive. He is alive when you know exactly where you're going in life, and you, you have it all planned out. And he is alive when you don't know what in the world to do, and you have not a clue on the decision that you should make regarding your life. He is alive. He is alive in sickness, and he is alive in health. And he wanted the disciples, and he wants us to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, because he presented himself alive to them after suffering by many proofs, appearing to them 
over the course of 40 days speaking about the kingdom of God. Now I want you to think about this because he appeared to them, he showed himself to them over the course of 40 days. Over the, now, 40 days doesn't seem like a lot, but um, how long has it been since Easter? About 28 days, it's the 24th now, about 28 days or so. And, and you're thinking, this pastor is still talking about the resurrection. He needs to go do some more reading. Actually, when we come to uh, Easter, uh, every Sunday is Easter. Because every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. That's why the Christians met on Sunday to celebrate the fact that he is alive. <clears throat> And so he showed himself over the course of 40 days, and it says he showed himself to many different people in many different ways. And I want you to think about this, yes, and this is a lot like an Easter message, but I want you to appreciate the fact that he is alive. He first appeared to Mary Magdalene. We see that in Mark chapter a 16, Mark chapter 16, verse 9. It says, Now, when he arose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. And we talked about her a few weeks ago. You see, he appeared to her first, the, the very lady who loved him and, and had enough of... of she got up in the morning and ran to the tomb because she loved Jesus so much. We also know that he appeared to the other ladies as well, the other uh, disciples in Matthew chapter 28. If you jump over there, Matthew 28, verse 8. We're told that... Some of the disciples, they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Now, this is the ladies. They, they departed from the tomb with fear and great joy, and behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. And so... He appeared to the women and to the other disciples. He appeared, if, if you want to look at Luke, we see that he appeared to Simon. In Luke chapter 24, verse 34. It says, beginning at verse 32, we have the, the incident where uh, Jesus is speaking with the two men on the road to Aramaeus, and we'll talk about them in a minute. But they're, they're, they're recalling uh, what had happened and the story around the re resurrection, and they said to each other, uh, they said to each other, <clears throat> do do." Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord has indeed risen. He has appeared to Simon. And so Simon had the opportunity to see the risen Lord. And then we also see here that he appeared to the two men on the road to Aramaeus. And there they were just walking down the road and they were, their hearts were downcast because, because of Jesus. And we're told in verse 13 that very day two of them were going to a village named Aramaeus, about seven miles from Jerusalem when they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And so Jesus, we're told, he appeared to these men as well. 
We see in the end of the Gospel of John that Jesus appeared to the other disciples without Thomas. If you want to look at John chapter 20, We see that Jesus appeared in verse 19. It says, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And he, he had this to say. He showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw of the Lord. And then we're told that a couple days later, Thomas uh, was not in that group. And eight days later, verse 26, the disciples were together again. And then Thomas was there and he appeared to the disciples with Thomas being there. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And then we're told that over the course of those 40 days, he appeared to many other disciples as well. And so if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul reminded us, reminded us of this. It says, verse 5, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared to me. You see, over the course of 40 days, Jesus showed himself to his disciples. And he not only showed himself, but he offered many convincing proofs as well. I guess he could have just showed himself, like, Alfredo, here I am. <laughs> hey, good to see you. And then gone. First time I saw him all day. No. So, for, and then he's gone, right? But Jesus went the extra mile and showed them many convincing proofs as well. And many of those we have read, but let's consider them just for a moment. For example, we see, if you want to turn with me to Luke chapter 24, We see that Jesus again was speaking to the men of Aramaeus and they're sharing with him. Uh, it says in verse 21, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have, have happened. And so they're, they're downcast because Jesus did not fulfill their expectations. And then something very strange happened. It says in verse 31, we're backing up to verse 28, it says, so they drew near to the village where they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, 
but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, remember, he did not, he did not recognize, they did not recognize who he was. It says he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And it says he vanished from their sight. It says, they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened us to the scriptures? You see, Jesus appeared to them. He talked with them. He even took bread with them. If you want to look at Verse 36, he appears to the disciples. And he says, as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself, himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you doubt, why do doubts arise in your hearts? See, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still in disbelief for joy, they were marveling, he said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Why did he eat it before them? To show that he was, he still had a body. Think about that. The risen Christ showed them his hands and his side. He ate with them. Now, there is a reason why Luke wants us to know these things. Because there, there had grown a movement called Gnosticism. And they said Jesus was somewhat of a phantom, but not really purely. Uh, his body really did never rose from the dead. Jesus is showing himself alive and he's presenting many infallible truths that he was alive to the point that he showed his scars and he literally ate with them. I find that fascinating, don't you? You talk about a superhero. You talk about a superhero who can... Um, know exactly what Thomas said. If you want to turn with me to John chapter 20. Thomas just simply said, you know, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger at his side, I will not believe. I simply will not believe. Jesus knew that, and eight days later, he comes back, and he presents himself to Thomas. And it says in verse 26, although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. 
Jesus wanted to offer Thomas a convincing proof. Jesus wanted to offer the disciples a convincing proof when Simon goes fishing and Jesus appears on the beach and they have been fishing all night and we looked at that last week and, and uh, they're throwing their net over the side and there's no fish and, and Jesus stands in the beach and says, try the other side. Now, I often wonder, did Jesus summon the fish to that net? I, I believe he did because the, he's the Lord of nature. Now, some want to say no. It was more like um, snappers. You guys ever go fishing for snappers? You guys got to get a life, man. <laughs> Where's the deacon of fellowship? We're going we're gonna to all go fishing for snappers. Now, snappers, you see them all popping in the water. These are saltwater fish, by the way. They, 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 you know what I mean? And so, you know, you could cast this way. Like I could tell my sons, because we go snapper fishing, um, and they could be fishing to the right, and I'll see them jumping to the left. And I'll say, hey, cast your rod to the left. And they cast it, and they catch a fish. And so now I'm like Jesus, right? No. <laughs> um, some get all caught up and say, no, you know, Jesus just saw the fish jumping. That's why he told them to, to, to cast the net on the other side. I don't think so. But the point is, you're arguing about somebody who had died and who was buried. And you're arguing over whether or not Jesus summoned the fish or the fish were there. Jesus, the risen Savior, was on the beach, dude. Get a life, man. And so he shows many convincing proofs over the course of 40 days that he was alive. Now, why did he do it? For entertainment purposes? Now, that's what I would have done. I would have said, hey, man, look at me. Yo, yo, you know, man, I'm alive. Dude, get with it. Check this out. Check this out. Alfredo, can you see me doing this? My poor... <laughs> My poor sons are running. They're so embarrassed of me right now. I'm just, just yes. Uh, that's what I would have done. Or did Jesus come back from the dead just to say, ha ha, I told you so, the prophecies were right. <laughs> he came back to prove the point that he is alive. He is alive. And so he hears your prayers on the sunny days and on the cloudy days. And he may not deliver you from all your woes, but he is alive. And he knows what you're going through. And he can sympathize with your weaknesses. And the scriptures even say, that he's praying for you at the right hand of God the Father. And he can do that because he is alive. And he can deliver you from your temptations because he is alive. Now some of you are still not convinced that Jesus is the Lord the risen Christ. How much more proof do you need? How much more? He showed himself in many, in many different ways to over 500 people over the course of 40 days. You know, um, when I was a kid, I may have told you this story before. When I was a kid, uh, I decided to drive my aunt's and my uncle's brand new white convertible Cadillac when I was five years old. <laughs> and so I jumped in the car. 
me and my sister, we jumped in the car. And I got behind the steering wheel. Now, I, know, I, I was very disappointed with Mark's illustration because, I, I mean, he talked about Captain America. But he didn't say anything about underdog. What happened to underdog? I mean, is underdog peanuts? What about speed racer? Speed racer, man. Don't tell me you have never heard of speed racer. Go speed racer, go speed racer, go. So now I was behind my aunt's brand new Cadillac playing speed racer. You know, and I'm holding on to the steering wheel and I just pull this lever because there's so many cool buttons. And the car starts rolling down the hill. My sister, she jumps out. Well, thanks a lot. I mean, she bailed on me, man. I'll tell you, she bailed on me. The car went off of a, went down my driveway, off the cliff. I went to jump out, and the door slammed into my hand, and my wrist was severed almost in half. And I almost lost my hand. And my mother sat in the emergency room and prayed all day because they were going, she didn't know if her son would have an amputated hand at the end of the surgery. I'll never forget the blood that was all over the place and just going cold. Do you believe my story? I didn't think so. I figured some of you wouldn't believe the story, so let me show you the scars. Because the scar is right here. See the scars. Do you see the scar? I can't go back and repeat it for you. I can't go back and repeat history for you. I can't show you a video. Jesus couldn't show you a video either. All he could do is what he could do. He showed the scars. E even my hand is shorter than the other. <laughs> Jesus showed the scars because he wanted you to believe that in the rainy days or in the cloudy days, he is alive. We pray. God in heaven, Thank you, Father, for your powerful word and the simple truth that you are alive. And Father, if there is anybody here who does not believe, and it's understandable, many of the disciples doubted that today you would just simply say, Lord God in heaven, help my unbelief. And with any little bit of faith I have, I choose to put my trust in you and believe. Will you make that your prayer? Lord, thank you. And to you, we give you all the glory. In Christ's name, amen. Please stand for this last song.
Well, may the grace of God, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as you worship and celebrate and serve the risen